GS man, I'm smart, and I'm going to tell you a brand new video for tutorials with GS. In today's tutorial, we're going to take a look at Adobe Premiere Pro CC 2015. In the new 2015 release, they basically gave us a new feature called HSL Secondary Color Editing. And with this new feature, you're able to change the color of objects in your video or change several things in your video depending on color. So you can do a lot of uh, good color correction with this new feature. Now, uh, recently I did a project uh, for someone that dealt with this cat that you're seeing on screen here. Uh, we did an animation. We had several uh, cat files here of the cat doing different things, as you see. And originally the cat was this orangish yellowish. Uh, but we changed our mind, we wanted to go ahead and use a black cat, a blackish grayish cat. So instead of having to redo the texture on this cat, we just decided to use the HSL secondary color effect and change the cat from orange to a dark blackish grayish cat. So I'm going to show you how that's done. Now you can do this with any piece of footage. My footage uh, happens to have an alpha channel in the background. So you'll see that the color correcting will be a lot more easier in this type of footage since we just have a, since we have a transparent background. With footage that has, you know, different colors, you may want to have to, you may have to pay attention to the options a bit more that I'm going to go over today. So just be aware about that. So we're gonna go ahead and change our workspace to color. So go up to Windows here, then head to Workspace, and then choose Color. And you'll see the new HSL Secondary Color Editing tool is right here. So we're gonna go ahead and drag a clip onto our timeline here. And I think this is a good clip. You can see the cat is walking. And what we wanna do is change the cat color to a black. Now, what you're able to do is you can go ahead and select what color you want to work with. So you can use the eyedropper tools here, and they'll do a pretty good job. Uh, you can add colors by using the second eyedropper here, so if you're missing a color, you can add that. You can also subtract colors by pressing that. If you happen to get too much of a color, you can subtract it again. So I can just go ahead and press that, and it gets subtracted, as you can see. However, you can also use the little color buttons down here. If you, if you have a general idea of what color you want to work with, then you can very well do that. We're working mainly with yellow and orange and red here. So I'm gonna go ahead and press the yellow one right here. And you'll have several options here. The top is basically your hue. What hue do you want to select? Then we have our saturation and then we have our luma. Whenever you move this, whenever you, whenever you move these arrows around, you're selecting a broader range with the top arrow. As you see, we're, we're selecting a broader range. Uh, the bottom arrow is mainly for feathering, so you can feather in other colors or feather out other colors. And that's basically how that works. And down here in saturation, if you move that, you're basically changing the pixel selection of the saturation. So do you want more saturation, less saturation in your selection of pixels? Uh, this first part is just working with pixel selection. You're selecting the pixels that you want to work with to change the color. And then here's your Luma. And you'll, you'll see that as we change our selections here, uh, it actually shows a live preview of what colors we're selecting. You can change this by selecting color gray, color black, or even white and black. And I think the white and black preview is the best. You can go and check mark this to have it open at all times or uncheck it so you're only seeing the, uh, the mask here as you're moving your colors around. I want to go and have it checked uh, completely though. And I think the black and white is the best one because you can really see uh, what you're selecting. It's sort of like a color difference type of mask. So I can see that we haven't fully selected the cat yet. We're still missing some of the top here. So I may want to change the range a bit. You can move your range around like this, as you can see. So you can move your range around. And you can obviously also uh, overlap different uh, ranges by dragging the top the top arrow here. We can expand our selection a bit. So maybe let's, let's incorporate some of the reds here. And as you see, now we're pretty much getting the entire cat. If I uncheck mark this and we go to color black or even uh, color gray, you see that we have the cat pretty much selected. The eyes are not selected, which is good because we, we don't want to change the color of the eyes. We just want to change the color of the fur here. So what we can do now, now that we, now, we, now that we have our selection basically, and I'm going to go ahead and stay on the white and black. Now that we have our selection, uh, we can go ahead and work with uh, the denoise and the blur. Denoising basically, basically just gets rid of some of the noise that you have. If you're trying to color correct but you have a lot of noisy footage, you can go ahead and bump this up a bit. 
and it'll basically get rid of, get rid of some of the pixels that you wouldn't want select but are selected. Blur is really good if you want to have more of a natural finish. Obviously, bumping it super high makes it completely useless, as you can see. But bumping the blur up by just a little bit, maybe like 5 or 10, I think works really well. So maybe 5 is too much. Maybe 2 or 3 even. That should do the job fairly well. Uh, so once you have figured out your denoising and your blurring, we can go on to the actual color changing. Now you can work with one color wheel or you can work with three color wheels and you can be more specific with highlights, shadows, and uh, mid-tones here. So for this part, I actually want to take this off and I actually want to see what I'm changing here. And as we move this cursor here, we can see the color change. So I want to go ahead and adjust all the mid-tones, all the shadows, and all the highlights to this green. As you can see, now we basically have a green cat. So that's pretty fun. Uh, but what we want to do, we want to create a black cat. So what we're going to do is, and by the way, these sliders here on the left and the right, um, these sliders on the left of the color wheel, you can basically change of how bright you want it to be, or how dark you want it to be. As you see, as we increase these, we're getting brighter colors. And as we decrease these, we are getting a darker color. So I'm going to go ahead and decrease these because we want to have a black cat or a gray cat. So we're going to decrease quite a bit here. And we have a dark green right now. Uh, perhaps we want to go to a portion where it's a bit more darker, right around this blue area maybe, where it's where the shadows are a bit more here, the darker areas here in the color wheel. Now we can also control some of the uh, green and magenta input as well as some of the blue and the orange here. So we're just going to go ahead and in our case, it doesn't matter too much because we're trying to make everything dark anyway. So I'm going to bring everything down just to the darkest levels that we can get. And as you can see, as we're changing this now, we're basically getting rid of a lot of the color uh, by taking the contrast out, by taking some of the tint out, by taking a lot of these things out to the very bottom. We're getting this dark cat and it looks a bit more gray, which is what we're looking for. So once we have that done, we can actually preview this and as you can see, our cat is basically, it's basically changed color from the orange to the uh, gray black now, which is exactly what we wanted. Now, if you see some color misconfigurations, uh, you can obviously change your settings here and it will automatically update here as well. But if you have several clips, for example, we have another clip here, and we want to add the same effect. You don't need to redo everything. Uh, this HSL secondary color correcting basically works as an effect. So what we can do is we can go ahead and as this goes off screen, and we have another clip here, you can actually go into your effects panel. So we go to our effects panel here. You can see that HSL secondary color, you can see that the color effect is actually an effect. Now, another interesting thing that I'd like to bring up, which is very useful, is that on some pieces of footage, for example, if you want to change the color of a car and the car is driving, say the car is green, so you want to change the color of a car, the car is green and it's driving in a very forested area where there's lots of forests, or say you have a still shot of someone talking in front of a forest and they have a green shirt on, but you don't want to select the forest in the background, you only want to select their shirt. You can actually create a mask where you want the effect to only be applied to. And as you can see here, here we have the ellipse tool, we have the rectangle tool, and we have the free selection tool here with the pen tool. And you can actually create a mask around the area you want the effect to be in. And that will basically allow you to control what you want color corrected, what you don't want color corrected. So this is really useful if you happen to have some colors that are conflicting with your footage that you don't want corrected but are being corrected because they happen to be the same color. So the masking tool here is really great, which is also one of the newer features that is applicable to a lot of effects. But like I was saying, if you have another clip here that you want to apply the same effect to, you don't need to, you don't need to redo this entire thing. All you got to do is grab this effect here, click the effect, copy it, control C, head on over to the next clip, control V to paste it, and would you look at that automatically, we have the exact same changes.
So hopefully you enjoyed the tutorial, hopefully you found it informative and helpful. If you did, go ahead and leave a like at the bottom. If you have any questions, if you have any comments, any feedback, if you have any tips for people who are doing this, if you've done this a lot and you know some better ways to color correct or you know how to use this effect better, please leave a comment down below. I'd love to learn more. We're all here to learn and I think it'd be really cool if we can uh, advance our knowledge together. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, go ahead and subscribe. We'd love to have you on board. Plenty of other Premiere Pro tutorials on the channel, other video editing tutorials on the channel. We have image editing tutorials, Photoshop tutorials, Audacity tutorials, Audition tutorials, GIMP tutorials, all kinds of cool software things on a channel. And if you're interested in that, go ahead and subscribe. And if you want to donate $8 to my Patreon page, you can do so. Link is in the top right corner of the screen. If you click the card, it will bring you to the page. And if you want to check out the vlogging channel, the gaming channel, the advice channel, or the music channel, links are in the description as well as on the end screen. And that's pretty much it, guys. Thank you for watching. As always, hopefully you're having a good evening. And this is GSM Smart, and I'll be back sooner than you think. Don't go anywhere.